I'm Craig Phillips and in this video I'm going to show you how to spray paint your outdoor buildings just like this one. Hopefully you will have seen one of my previous videos on Silverline's YouTube channel where I do a full step-by-step -step video on how to construct your own garden office like this. I'm going to start by prepping up, sanding the sides right the way around, then I'm going to mask up the windows and the doors and start to spray paint the sides. I'm using an electric orbit sander with a very fine 240 grit disc. If your timber is older or reclaimed, you may need to use a lower grit to start with and work up to a higher grit to get a smoother prepared surface ready for painting. Next you'll need to mask up your doors and window frames to protect from any overspray. First make sure the frames are clean and dry. I'm using Wagner's own masking kit which will help speeding up the process. The plastic sheet comes on a roll and has masking tape already connected to one side. This allows you to fix it to one edge of the frame. Trim it down to length with your scissors, drape down the sheet over the surface which forms a static effect and will stick to the glass. Then using a standard roll of 50mm wide masking tape you can secure all edges of the sheet down to the frame. Do the same around your windows and then you're ready to paint. I'm going to use my Wagner fence and decking spray. It's ideal for outside areas like fence and decking and outer buildings like this one. You can use any paint, any colour, any brand, water based or oil based paint. I'm going to be using my chalk and mineral paint from the Alfresco range. Now it is a good quality so we'll have to dilute this down 10% to use it with my Wagner. If your unit isn't spraying the paint smoothly and you're getting a mottled effect on the surface, then your paint is likely to be too thick and it will require dilution. But don't worry, it's easy to do so. This reservoir holds 1300 millimeters and I'm using a 750 milliliter tin of paint. By adding 75 milliliters of clean cold water, this equates to 10% water, 90% paint, which from my experience gives me the perfect professional finish when I'm using French heat paint. This is the type of consistency you're aiming for, where the paint freely drips off the stirrer back into the reservoir. At this point, double check that the nozzles are assembled correctly. The yellow union nut can be hand tightened and doesn't require any tools. But you don't want to over tighten this as you may require movement of the nozzle when in use. Fit the flow tube to the underside of the attachment. You have the option to have this facing forward when you're spraying downwards or to the rear when you're spraying the wall or above your head. Screw the head of the attachment onto the reservoir. I always give it a quick shake and then I'm ready to start paint spraying. The sprayer nozzle has three settings which can be adjusted for different spray patterns. If you position it vertical, it's ideal for spraying up and down. If the nozzle is on the detail position, this is perfect for more complex areas. If you position it horizontally, it's ideal for spraying from left to right. At the back of the trigger, you'll find a paint dial, which can be turned right the way down to project a small amount of paint, or turn it forward to spray more paint. The tongue and groove cladding on my garden office is installed horizontally, so I'm spraying from left to right. When you pull the trigger, the turbine on the unit automatically cuts in, pressurises the reservoir and the paint will start to spray. The key is to keep the reservoir consistently moving at a continuous pace, holding the nozzle about 100mm away from the surface you're spraying. Whether it's up or down or left to right, you'll quickly see that each pass over of the paint will cover around 100mm wide. Now of course you can go as quick or as slow as you prefer by adjusting the paint flow on the back of the trigger. Like with most things, practice makes perfect. Anyone using a sprayer for the first time, I'd recommend having the paint flow turned down, starting off nice and slow until you find your required speed. So my first coat of paint on the cladden was complete in just seven minutes. Then I left this for about two hours to dry. The paint dries quick when applied with a paint sprayer, allowing me to give the second coat on the same day which I adjusted the nozzle and sprayed up and down to get the perfect coverage. I've built some wooden corner trims to mould around all four corners of the garden office. Likewise with the rest of the woodwork, I'm going to be applying two coats of paint before I fix them to the structure. This saves on further masking and cutting in.
I'm now turning my attention to the wooden trims I fitted around the UPVC windows, filling in all nail and screw holes, and applying a second stage of masking tape over the painted tongue and groove cladding that I did yesterday. This will allow me to spray paint my window frames and doors, wooden soffits and fascia boards. Now the fill is dry on the woodwork, one quick sanding and it's ready to be painted. Again I'm using a chalk and mineral based alfresco paint which has been diluted down by 10%. This time I've got my nozzle setting on the detail position which help paint more difficult areas. Likewise with the larger areas I'm keeping the attachment moving at all times and the nozzle around 100 to 150 millimeters away from the surface. Now the fascia boards have had one coat, I'm going to leave this to dry for an hour or two, then give it a second coat before removing the masking tape. While the fascia boards are drying, I can start to apply my first coat of paint on the wooden trims around the window frames and the UPVC French doors. Again, I've kept the nozzle set on the detailed position. This time turning my paint flow down on the dial behind the trigger. This reduces the amount of paint flow which works perfect for painting windows and doors. So now the UPVC doors have been sprayed. I'm going to leave this to dry for at least two hours and then give it a second coat. From this wide shot you can really see how effective Wagner's masking kit is. It not only protects the surrounding surfaces from any overspray paint, but allows you to paint surfaces so much quicker with the added benefit of cutting in one colour against the other, far better than I can do with a paintbrush. Once your painting is complete, you don't have to wait for it to dry before removing the masking tape, but do be careful as most paints don't fully cure until after a week or two. For the finishing touches, I'm going to glue and fix the corner trims into position that I painted yesterday. So that's my garden office paintwork now complete in just four hours work spread over two days with drying time. All Wagner products benefit from German engineering. The fence and deck and sprayer comes with a standard three year guarantee. However, if you register on Wagner's website and extend the guarantee to four years, it's completely free of charge. If you'd like any more information on any of Wagner products or keep in touch with Mr. and Mrs. DIY, please follow the link in the description below.